My name is Jayakumar Haryaran. I'm an executive coach, speaker, and author. Stories That Shift is a series of intimate conversations with CXOs and practitioners of various disciplines about what makes them tick. Stories are not what we say. Stories are who we are. And I have a very interesting guest for this episode, Karthik Srinivasan. Karthik, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jay, for having me on the show. Um, for the longest time, I've been thinking about figuring out what goes in your mind and how my experience of you as, as a person and the persona that you inhibit in all your social forms, it's not that different at all. And that's really a tough act to follow, right? So as a communication strategist, um, just for the sake of context, so that people who are tuning in get a better sense of your journey. Uh, what's keeping you busy these days? What are you all about? What services do you offer? Two things mainly. I do corporate workshops, uh, primarily on assorted subjects, but most people seem to seek corporate workshops for their leaders on personal branding. That seems to come to me more often because I speak about it often and I've written a book on the subject. Apart from this, there are also customized workshops that come in. For instance, a marketing head comes to me and said, we are doing a lot of stuff, but nothing seems to be really standing out. Is there some inspiration that you can show us that will make us think out of the box? Is there a way to do that? Or they come up and tell us, we've been doing a lot of employer branding stuff, but we really want to break out of the routine that we are stuck into. Uh, how can you help? So I actually look at their existing work. I look at other work from the globe to give them inspiration and then take a practical actual brief and then we actually thrash it out live for them to look at the same brief in a very different way compared to what they've been seeing till last week. So that's the workshop part that comes quite often. Then I do consulting work with brands. For instance, um, an FMCG food brand that I worked with recently is North based, that is Gurgaon based. And they wanted somebody who is aware of the South market because they've been doing a lot of primarily North based communication yeah. and merely transcreating it for South. So how to choose uh, right up to the right popular song from the South, which can attract all four, five states these days, that level is one. And quite a few brands come to me, say that we want you to be the in-between point between us and the agency. Wow. Literally. I mean, it's almost like an agency whisperer or a client whisperer for both sides, wow. quite literally. Because they say that this agency is working well and great campaigns are coming up, but our brief is not probably reaching them the right way in the beginning. And the agency says the same thing. I mean, we're not able to understand what the feedback from the client is. So I stand in the middle and help them both. So those are the stuff that I keep doing. Jeez, I mean, uh, the rest of it, I saw it coming. The last one is a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know agency whisperer. <laughs> yeah, it's both. It's agency and client whisperer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but the fourth one is absolutely... Um, I followed your take on a lot of brands across, uh, you know, from the Hindi belt. And India is a heterogeneous market and sometimes it doesn't recognize... It doesn't get recognized as such, which, which is so important, right? I mean, the ability to connect with an individual in their language with local sensibility is so important. Sometimes that gets lost in, in the translation or in your case, even with the transliteration, right? Um, and I've seen a lot of your funny takes on... Uh, how does this song sound in Tamil or in <laughs> Kannada? <laughs> yeah, It'll be quite bizarre. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, out of all these services that you offer, right, what keeps you busy most of the time? Um, it'll be the workshop on personal branding. Mm. I so that's that the big one. Quite literally, I, I do that almost week after week, day after day. Quite a few oh. clients come in and thankfully after the pandemic, everything has gone online. Much, much less is offline because before the pandemic it used to be for instance if i am working with say 30 leaders mm -hmm. they used to book an off-site place somewhere else outside the town and i go full day or two days and thrash it out completely and do it after the pandemic it became impossible to sync calendars of assorted people for some reason so it has more become one-on-one -on -one and online so the whole two-day workshop or one-day workshop yeah. now has become one-on-one -on -one for each person as eight modules eight one-hour sessions or seven one-hour sessions depending on their calendar availability okay. and this is done over a period of two to three months so it's much easier 
more casual uh, and the timing is very easily manageable given the traffic here timing is far easy manageable so instead of going from home to airport or to an off site i just go from kitchen to my other room to do the workshop but i i got to tell you this so um <clears throat> as an executive coach i i i thrive in one on one conversations and i never thought that group coaching conversations was going to be a i i didn't think my energy was com- going to come alive mm-hmm. till a client reached out to me and said you know what uh we have looked around and i think you will be able to make more sense in this why don't you give it a shot i told her look it's not the money conversation at all it's the fact that i need to come alive i need to make uh, i need to add value and i need to enjoy the process that's very very important and uh, she said why don't you give it a shot and i was pleasantly surprised intimate group small group so i have a 20 hour module out of which 4 hours is online and the rest is still face offline face to face mm. yep so are you telling me that you do so the one on one individual sessions i kind of get that yep. but if you have to do a one day workshop are you still doing it online yeah, yeah no i'm not doing it online because the the group workshops cannot be done online exactly. at all because yeah, all yeah, you yeah, see yeah, is stamp yeah. size photographs exactly. of people that's impossible exactly. even if it's two people yeah. it just doesn't yeah. work yeah. for instance pre pandemic this was 2019 and even early 2020 i was completing that process I did a three-year continuous workshop for Maruti Suzuki. Okay. And this was for, not for senior leaders, but for employees across the board, right from shop floor to the technology team to sales and marketing team, everybody and all over India. This was in Delhi. So I used to travel from here to Delhi during peak winter in Delhi winter with bad polluted air, cold, everything. <laughs> but Delhi is still Delhi. There is yeah. a charm during winter yeah, for Delhi. Yeah, That's yeah, always yeah, there. Yeah, completely. 100%. And each, and it, it, it used to be a 10-day session that I used to do. each day used to have about 35 to 40 employees and they had booked a hotel and do it so i am supposed to speak for whole day 10 days back to back to address 40 people per batch it was exhilarating it was fantastic because the energy in the room is phenomenal because it's such a diverse group of people speaking so many languages and coming from so many perspectives about the concept of personal branding for employees why do i bother to that to saying i am on the shop floor why do i care all that kind of question but they have been they have been chosen for a reason by maruti suzuki based on their interests based on what they showcase themselves etc but by the end that was the first time i was doing such an intensive workshop spree for 10 days and i came home after the first 10 days i was not able to speak at all of oh, karthik why is it gone you needed a red bull infusion 10 days not even red bull it's a throat so i went to the doctor Jeez. i had gone to an ent doctor saying i'm not able to speak what yeah. happened and she explained very beautifully thinking i mean saying that just imagine you start running because you're interested in running and you start running on day 1 if you run 10 kilometers what will happen to you immediately after you finish running 10 kilometers that's what's happened to your throat so you can't strain your throat so much without gradually increasing the number of hours you speak you have done that whole thing and then she gave me a very interesting example of politicians mm-hmm. she said have you ever noticed why narendra modi takes so much breaks during even a word and a sentence we thought it's just pregnant pause or dramatic pause she says it's not just dramatic pause he is preserving his voice and energy and it is not just him quite a few other leaders they pause so much during i mean we feel bored l- listening to a one sentence one word and then a big pause and then he looks around what's happening but he is preserving his energy he knows how much he can push his voice at his age and he's doing it carefully and planned way so that's what it is basically so it is very exhilarating offline sessions are a different energy altogether and more so when in a group and the group is highly engaged it is phenomenal because you get live feedback and you can change real time what you're thinking what you're saying if you know the subject really well online doesn't have that energy at all unless it's one to one and then you have done enough research of who you are talking to at least absolutely uh i used to joke with my colleagues uh, for a one day workshop the first day first time i was doing it i landed one day before hmm. and after my two day workshop i stayed back one day just to rest <laughs> up for all that yep, that yep. seems like luxury it's compared actually to physically your tiring if you speak for a whole it's day crazy. physically it's, tiring. it's 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 crazy yeah. so uh, some of the speaking gigs that i do the main person will come and say can you spend some time after your talk to speak with our guest i said after my talk i don't want to see myself exactly <laughs> <laughs> just want to keep quiet and lie down or something yeah or take rest so it is it is uh, extremely tiring and exhilarating of course <clears throat> um but as somebody who's been 
following your journey for quite some time. Um, I'm really interested in this transition from an employee to a free agent of sorts. How did that come about? Um, to be very honest, I was planning for it because I had already spent about 15 plus years, 20 years in the industry on client side, agency side, PR, corp com, social media, digital media, everything done. And it's very easy to get another job. That's not a big deal at all. You can easily get one more. But is it the same thing that I want to keep doing is what I was looking at. There is always a constraint when you're in an agency or the client side, you're just looking at things like this. At least for the agency, it's slightly more open. But with the client side, you're just looking at one direction, one industry area, nothing much at all. And I was planning for it in the back of my mind from 2015, 16 onwards. But in 2018, I said, enough is enough. Let me just move on and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Because job to mil jayega. It's not a big deal. But let me try it for, a, say, on an year or two kind of stuff. In hindsight, now after say about four and a half, five years, I think I should have quit long ago. Probably about 15 years into the gig, I should have quit, basically. But never too late, and there is a time and place for everything that we can't decide, somebody up there decides, and that's probably what happened. Couldn't be happier at all. Couldn't be happier, because things happen in my speed and not the city speed. Because if you're an employee, <laughs> things have to happen on the city speed and Not time. just the city speed, right? The entire ecosystem around you, clients, managers, exactly. bosses, da -da 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 -da, whatever. Correct. <laughs> uh, it's so refreshing to meet uh, another soulmate who kind of thought like that. Um, because different strokes for different folks, yeah. right? When, when I can take off on a Wednesday morning and watch a movie just because mm. I'm the captain of my ship kind of a thing, uh, all my really, really highly paid... Uh, <laughs> they can't uh, afford to. They can't. And, and they're looking at me like, what What have you done? How did you do this? Da, 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 whatever. But I tell them, look, let's be clear. We all pay a piper. Right? As long as you make peace with the piper that you're paying, okay. then life is beautiful. Exactly. You just have to make peace. Okay. Never assume that somebody has got a free ticket. Okay, absolutely and, you not. Know, absolutely uh, not at all. It's just yes. turned up. It won't. Uh, it won't roses. turn. Out. Things won't turn out <laughs> anything at all. You need to turn things out yourself. And you know what? It's um, it's it's. This reminds me of. Okay, there is there. There was this um, uh, CEO from Brazil, uh, Ricardo Semler. I, I used to read his books. Maverick. In fact, his book was called Maverick. And he would say, I would go and talk to organizations and everybody would say the same thing. Oh, but we are not like that. <laughs> Our organization is different. And when I talk to leaders about, um, so you got to think about an identity beyond your work. Yep. Have you really thought about it? Uh, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I'm scared. Uh, I will cross the bridge when I come to it. Yes, you need to build the bridge yourself, right from day one. Exactly. Exactly the point. Exactly. And for me, I had to rely on a lot. I mean, this was about 10 years ago. I had done 17 years in the grind. And uh, while I had paid my uh, dues working for the man, I, there came a point in time I said, uh, I need to look at my life a little differently. Not just work. And work happens to be one construct in, in this entire thing. And uh, it was, it is beautiful. Like you said, um, I was just sharing with somebody, I called up the missus from a, a bathroom once. I had gotten off like this really great conversation with the CEO of a company in Southeast Asia. And I was filled with so much of positive vibes. I called her up and I said, I'm really thankful for doing what I do. And she said, yes, that's right. But couldn't it have waited? <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> oh, God. Good it, was, point. it was amazing. So, but that's interesting. What piece of advice would... And I love what you just said. You said you were prepared. Yep. It's not like one fine day you got up and said, this is a Monday, I refuse to go in anymore. I think the preparation is important. Yep. Right? Uh, what other advice would you want to give to people who are seeing the limits of their career. Uh, like water, we all find our level and that's where we stay, right? I mean, it's a pyramidical structure. Not everybody can get to be CEO and whatever. What advice would you want to give to people who want to set out? Two things that helped me. I won't call it advice because it helped me. It might help others too. One, plan your finances accordingly, which is the most important part. And have a, a, a mental image of what you want to make on a permanent basis or a per year basis when you quit and go on your own independent completely. Because if you don't have that, things will go completely on its own. Because if you have an image or a number 
or a figure whatever you have in mind you at least have a yardstick whether you will reach it or not or reach somehow or cross it whichever it is so you are you are at least in your mind sure that something is moving in some direction otherwise if you don't have a number you just jump into it you can't just keep flailing and then think you're swimming you're probably not swimming you're actually sinking so it won't help at all this is particularly for people who have families and yeah, kids yeah. you need to pay school fees and rent and all that stuff that's important the more important part because the money part can be taken care of you speak to people you speak to uh, speak for advice with cas they will tell you ye sab karna hai you you got so much savings you got land investment whatever it is blah blah the more important part is the non monetary personal brand part the personal brand is so important because most people who quit or want to quit they think that their next independent work will come from somebody they have already worked with or What they a know fallacy. it's a fallacy what a fallacy i tell them 99% <laughs> of your work will come from people you have no clue that exists why is that but they know you you I don't know i know it's know true but exactly. why is that it is because the 99% world is much 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 larger than the 100 people that you know in this world the 100 people will probably engage with you on a chat after you quit to to encourage you saying you're doing good blah blah but they can't be incentivized to give you work for a money they won't do that the 19% of the world it's much 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 larger than the 100 150 200 people that you have built rapo with during your work that's the number that we can build rapo with we got that it can't go you can depend on them for your first month first week first year beyond that it won't last you need to have a pipeline from the 99 percentage for that you need to build personal brand personal branding is nothing but getting your image and value out to strangers not to the people you know people you don't know so it's very interesting there are millions of people who you don't know at all but they think they know you sure. they seem to know you based on the filtered level of personal branding that you build there are many things that i don't speak about at all which is only meant for my friends family peers and wife kids at all i don't speak about them but it's fine it's fine based on what i speak people form an opinion and that's where the work comes from that really helps that's the second part so build your inbound pipeline by building your personal brand long before you think of quitting which can even be after 2 years or 3 years of working there's no problem at all you can use it and that runway would keep you in good stead once you quit i fell off my chair when uh, a career counselor for my son who's in 12th standard said do you have a linkedin page <laughs> you need to have yeah you need to have because my son doesn't have he's in college he still doesn't have one he just built one very recently because he's studying media and comms <laughs> oh jeez but you know i'm i'm going to ask some hard questions about this because i think we see the light uh, and and i think it makes immense sense uh, i'm sure you've been through the number of reasons mere paas itna hi time hai uh you know why should i do this Correct. you know uh, i've spent 30 years in this industry yeah, everybody knows me yeah, everybody knows me yes. and uh, third is uh, what do i write about here huh. what do i talk about practical questions right yes. uh, imposter syndrome uh, overcoming that and how do i find my voice people will troll me people will say uh, oh this is what you actually think and you know stuff like that and it's a long torturous road karthik it's very easy for us you know um, i was just selling somebody uh the people who don't complain about who say that money is not important are the wealthy correct right? because they can afford they can, yeah correct <laughs> <laughs> and for us we we've, we've come some way in that and we kind of know the importance how can we help a cxo to take those steps yep so let me address the first thing i don't have enough time i have only 24 hours a yeah. day yeah. blah blah etc yeah. now I don't see personal branding as an extra activity that you need to fit in your day. You need to fit it as part of your daily habits. Otherwise it just won't. Wait, it's like brushing or you're like running every day. Like a 5 kilometer day. running every five day. 5 kilometer running every day. Amazing. I fit it in my day literally. Amazing. It's something that I have to do without which I'll feel guilty sleeping in the night. It's like having a bath, it's like having meals at the right time, it's like spending time with your wife every single day or watching some show for half an hour. Just like that personal branding is part of your day. If you make it part of your daily habit it won't feel like a chore that you need to do for your future it's just part of something that you do for your future every single day you don't need to write every single day online but you at least consume relevant content meant for your industry and your personal brand every single day there's something that i keep telling people that personal branding is 90% behind the screen 
ten percent in front of the screen in terms of performance. You're performing on LinkedIn, performing on Twitter. Even though the word performance is used for artists, yeah, yeah, yeah. but even writing something is a it performance. It is, of it's course, hundred percent. Exactly. No two yeah, ways about it. Yeah. So to come to that performance, you need to prepare. That happens all alone. Nobody is watching you at all. That's ninety percent effort. Most people take the ultra route. Say, think performance is ninety percent, and reading and researching is ten percentage. I say flip it completely. The researching is ninety percent because you're doing it because you are finding value in it in the first place, and then you think there might be a broader audience which might also find value in what I found value in. If you don't find value and you're just faking your thing, saying this is a very interesting whole world, watch it. You can't sustain your interest for a long time. The second thing most people do as a mistake is that they they stick to their routine only based on vanity metrics, which is number of likes I get, number of comments I get, number of shares I get, number of people who call me up and say I read your post. That is not sustainable at all. It has to be an internal metric. I gained something from this. Let the world gain it. I enjoyed doing this. I enjoyed sharing this. I enjoyed watching this. Let the world do this. Without that, it won't work at all. The other thing that you had mentioned in terms of time, I don't have time. The whole world knows me. I've spent thirty years in this industry. Why do I need to brand myself? The world will brand my world will brand me. That's the problem. The world will brand you based on the limited information they have about you. based only on your income earning capability nothing else beyond who you are as a human and what your values are what kind of person you are nothing at all and that you need to craft and put it out to the world i have this analogy of um, living in a 100 window house imagine there is 100 windows i know that there won't be any privacy at all if there are 100 yeah, windows <laughs> but imagine you're living in a 100 window house you can shut 95 windows and live through those five windows whenever you move from them i mean you're not going to move in those or through those windows or uh, behind those windows very often they are probably in that corner that corner that corner wherever it is but whenever you move from them whenever you move in behind them the world can see you because those windows are open rest of the windows are shut the only people who know you 100% are the people who live inside the house who are your family friends peers for the rest of the world they are watching a very curtailed view of who you are based on the five windows you chose to open the five windows is an example of what are the areas that should define you in your personal brand it's your personal branding definition and that's something that i help define for leaders first because when i ask them to define your personal brand they start with i work here this is my education yeah, 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 this is yeah. my alma mater yeah. and uh, this is my industry area yeah. that's about it yeah absolutely nothing else at all yeah. they go completely blank after i ask them to do then i need to bring them saying within your work which specific area interests you or defines you the most within you as an individual who has 100 interest which two interest do you want to pick from outside world perspective that you want to showcase within you as a family man which element of you as a family man you want to showcase reasonably often not very often sure, reasonably often sure, sure. on do that and then you will get about five or six topics that becomes your personal brand that's the five windows you choose to open so next time you're saying i don't have anything to read anything to write at all it's your mistake if you have those five windows open and the five topics you know what to read and where to go to read you can't just open a google and then say what do i read today mm. it has to come to you you need to build your pipelines the pipelines used to be there earlier when people used to subscribe to magazines yeah, and yeah, newspapers yeah. now mm -hmm. even leaders don't read newspapers because yeah. this device sure. has completely disrupted Absolutely. everything they think when news is needed mm. they will open whatsapp and read or they will open in shots and read but in shots and whatsapp are somebody else's curation you need to build your own pipeline to understand within what i have defined for myself am i reading well am i reading consciously good material Beautiful. to build my perspective absolutely if you don't build perspectives you can't build perspectives for others simply that's it there is a famous quote by steve jobs who says creativity is nothing but connecting the dots but you need to know that the dots exist <laughs> if you don't know the dots exist what would you connect so you need to read more beyond yeah. your zone comfort yeah, zone yeah. then you would be able to connect the dots as simple as that um just a circle back to the basics why should a cxo build a personal brand so, or forget a cxo yes. vp hai 20 saal ka experience hai yep. and uh he is kind of figuring out that if not this job i'll get another job uh, i'll move up the ladder and you know stuff like that i have a limited runway uh in that i will exist meaningfully in the space that i'm in the world can do can get by without one less opinion so 
why bother adding to the white noise correct absolutely it's a good question and even for somebody who is not looking for the next job and yeah. probably yeah. retiring she mm-hmm. or she is mm-hmm. retiring mm-hmm. at say 55 mm-hmm. i would still say personal branding really helps mm-hmm. in some ways and mm-hmm. i will explain what ways are done mm-hmm. i am looking at it as an entrepreneur or as yeah. an individual entrepreneur for my next work coming from and people knowing me giving me work even if somebody is retiring it's perfectly fine personal brand is useful the point of personal brand is to just ensure that whenever something relevant or appropriate that comes in your field of work or field of interest which may not be work at all not monetary benefit but just passion based interest whatever someone who doesn't who you don't know should point fingers at you saying he might be interested for instance i might be say 55 i want to retire and in my post retirement life i would like to pursue some interests mm-hmm. one could be i want to collect old records of hindi film songs mm-hmm. now if uh, that's my interest i need to put that interest out so that the right people point fingers at the right source for i for me to go there and check or point fingers at somebody to connect to me for uh, for for getting connected and speaking to them about the records hindi records and etc and build my interest basically that's interest based yes but just flip it to the monetary based the same thing somebody mm. should point fingers if two people are talking about who is appropriate for a personal branding workshop uh, for my company mm. they should be able to think me first or yeah. second or yeah. third and point fingers at me whether it works or not it's a different Absolutely. thing depending on the cost timing sure. and whatever it is but they need to be able to point fingers at me that's the simple rule for personal branding so it's not about work alone it's about interest area so even if you're not for instance forget the hindi film songs collection gotcha you are a, you are a weekend runner or a weekend cyclist you are interested in that if you just talk about that interest alone somebody will figure out that you're interested in running interested in uh, cycling whatever it is and connect with you with that interest mm. it's always good to connect with people with similar interests whether it materializes into something mutually interesting or not it's different but you're able to make that connection based on that so you're literally seeding the world with your interest areas or professional qualification or work related areas so that the world is aware that this person exists and he or she is interested in these kind of things whether it's work related or interest areas or hobbies or whatever it is the pointing fingers is the most important part you can argue i don't want the world to point fingers at me at all i would like to live like a hermit perfectly fine live like a hermit don't bother about social media personal branding at all it's absolutely it's absolutely valid. all right absolutely perfectly yeah. fine i mean there are people like that i am very happy and content i have enough money in my yeah. bank i have settled everything yeah. done i want to be left alone perfectly fine please be left alone and be completely in your hermit it's a great life actually if yeah, you want to do is. that yeah. perfectly do that yeah. no problem at all for everybody else who has some interest some work related work please do this it will help no i think it it does make a uh immense amount of sense right uh and we we are not saying that everybody perforce needs to invest in this as a as a means as a, as in keeping the end in mind right yep, this yep. is something that the end or may or ga- may not happen may or may not happen yes, right correct, it's correct. like writing right correct. i mean you write primarily for yourself correct. uh as as long as you if you get into a creative endeavor and you're constantly looking around saying you can make liking, money off it yes correct uh, it's not a great thing fantastic uh you've been a part of the og in the social space in india right uh how did you gravitate towards this what are your numbers by the way on on platform if you get shared no no just give a just give a ballpark number no just just last seen it is about some 70000 odd followers on twitter okay and about 220000 on linkedin that's about it i okay. don't look at anything else very interesting yeah. insta about like some 7000 6000 uh, 7000 okay. i joined insta okay. very very late kicking gotcha. and screaming no no i got yeah. it are you on threads Well, yeah, I'm on Threads, of course. Yes. I'm just exploring it because I like Threads as a format, not the platform itself. Okay. The threaded nature of communication and which Twitter pioneered, yeah. I really like that format because there is a big value for it. I mean, I'm not sure if you've explored that as a format. It's a fascinating format. It's unlike any format in human communication, and oh. and I'm not exaggerating at all. So just imagine you are playing TT or tennis with your friends in the evening, okay? And these are your friends, close friends, and then you crack a joke about a particular political party. Okay. and then you do that and everybody laughs except one guy who's very annoyed saying how dare you crack a joke on the political i'm a big as fan it's of so ha- as yeah, it's so open exactly happens. it happens <laughs> and then you tell him said uh, why you here day before yesterday when you're playing tt he said no i was not but why are you asking said i cracked a joke on another political party you are not there right that is a equivalent of threads i crack a joke day before yesterday on one x 
and then the okay. day after the next i crack another and i reply to that first tweet there is prior context in communication which doesn't exist offline offline it just goes up in the air here it's there just imagine how you can use it in a very powerful manner if you're interested in one topic say mm. there is a, a guy named krish ashok i'm sure you're following yeah, krish yeah, ashok yeah, on twitter yeah, he's a fascinating yeah, yeah. character he started talking about his cooking endeavor in 2014 or 15 he used to cook for his family in the evening he has interesting eating habits he has a, a, a lunch of sorts or a full fledged meal of sorts at around 10 or 11 in the morning and then he works out during lunch time i believe because the gym is empty and everything is completely empty and then he has only one early supper kind of stuff in the evening that's a two meals kind of stuff nothing else so he started cooking for his family and then started sharing it on twitter here's a photo i made this 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 etc now whenever you look at his this is what i cooked it's in the form of a thread the difference is in the perception of how people perceive krish ashok for instance if they see one tweet of him cooking for his family they think pya yeah, one guy in chennai he cooked for his family end of topic when they see the second one they say oh i think i saw him last week cooking for his family he's doing it again okay fine and then after 3 years in the same thread they see a uh, tweet number 222 there is 200 more above and then 200 more below after you see in between the whole perspective of krish ashok as a casual cook has gone krish ashok is a hardcore interested passionate chef is the opinion that comes across similarly you share one photograph of a bird people will think you randomly shot a photo of a bird you share 200 it's in the thread and you will realize this is almost a quasi professional bird photographer he's so passionately interested even though he's not qualified passionately interested the same effect could come in insta but you need to look at their profile and the profile has to show bird 1 bird 2 bird 3 and then you see an album and then you do that but on twitter it comes a single tweet on your timeline but there is more about more below and then you realize this person has been consistently showcasing his his or her interest in one specific area so they must be not an expert but passionately interested in the topic that's threads for you and it can be used for many many things for instance most journalists stay on a story by writing at least one column about it every week saying this happened this happened this happened they, that's Got all they keep on yeah, yeah, till the yeah. story reaches yeah, a logical, logical conclusion, conclusion basically yeah. similarly you can stay on one topic of your interest again and again week after week by just replying to your own last week's thread instead of starting a new thread which will which will make people think you're doing it for the first time reply reply oh, reply, love reply. It. stay on love it that's love it that's it that's what twitter enables and now threads enables that too I think uh, it's a beautiful segue into consistency. Yep. As behavioral change, uh, yep. somebody, uh, one of my best friends, he told me consistency beats uh, intensity. Absolutely. It does. I just loved it so much, yes. right? Because to show up again and again and again and again, relentlessly, yes. relentlessly, without bothering about whether somebody is watching yeah, or not, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. What uh, advice would you have to somebody who's new to the game now? in terms of social media social media yep. you've been there done that whatever it's very easy for somebody to come in and say get odd and saying what difference will my, my voice make correct what advice do you have correct that? so your voice probably won't make any difference if you're starting today yeah. on week 1 or month 1 or even year 1 it won't at all the point is to stay the game it's like i mean i often link personal branding with personal health both are exactly the same because at the bottom of it both are about only two things there are only two levers that you can control what goes in and what goes out for your health what goes in is what you eat how you choose what you eat and what you burn is what goes out nothing else at all that's the basic of course there are more nuances to it that's it personal branding is exactly same what you put in your brain as content relevant to your brand and what gets out occasionally uh, consistently what goes in what goes out so if you overlook the social metrics vanity metrics platform metrics that you need to keep look at but not build your content or build your strategy around the numbers you can still build it because if you're an influencer those numbers matter a lot because your rate card depends on those numbers for me i'm not an influencer and the rate cards don't depend on the numbers at all so i don't care about the numbers what matters to me is am i consistent with my world view and topics that i talk about again and again and again it will build a following if you are consistent if it's useful to an audience it will build an audience if the topic is very broad based for instance you are talking about fmcg products or advertising which includes everybody or movies music 
you would have a much larger base. But if you're talking about the aerospace sector or banking industry or insurance industry, it will have a commensurate smaller, industry, smaller kind of audience. Even that you can expand. You can actually talk about insurance industry from a layman perspective that anybody can understand. This is a yardstick that I tell leaders to follow. There is a rule called ELI 5 which is explained to me like I'm five. Yeah. So it. any complex topic, if you're able to explain to a five-year-old child and then you gradually build the complexity. Instead of starting with ELI 40, that is explained to me like I'm 40-year-old in the industry, start with five and then gradually build it to 10, 15 and 20 and make it universally understandable and comprehensible. You will actually get a lot more audiences following you thinking, okay, he's talking about insurance which is very complex or investment which is very complex, but even I'm able to understand it. Let me follow this person. So that really, really helps. That's the thing. Stick to you. Stick to your core competence of what you are interested in, what you want to talk about. Forget audience building and LinkedIn hacks and all that stuff, <laughs> posting a selfie and all that stuff. Stick to your topic. It's like you hitting the gym in, say, on January 1 because you made a New Year resolution on December 31st. By the end of January or, say, 20th or 21st January, you can't look at your biceps yeah, because it course, won't be anything at yeah, all. Yeah. But by the end of October, if you have been regular, people will point out to you. Hey, saying, you, know, hey, yeah, you look, you you look very muscles, different. Yeah, you look yeah. very, very, very fresh these days. What happened? <laughs> what are you doing? And then you realize, oh, people are noticing. That's what happens. So stay the, stay the course. It's very easy to stay, stay the course to... For people who are starting today and seeing after two months, I'm not seeing anything. Only two people are liking my post on LinkedIn. For that, you need to look at your numbers and do course correction in between. Mm. But you can't change your course strategy. The course correction is for, are there some content that's working well? Can I do more of that without diluting my brand? Those are the things that numbers are useful for. But you can't change the strategy completely saying, I'll start posting selfies from tomorrow just to rake in the just, numbers. Yeah. People following you for selfies won't follow you for your actual content. Yeah, they so might you lose, lose yeah, the audience yeah, completely. Absolutely. Um, uh, recently, I saw another tweet of yours uh, in another video and I loved it. I love the nature of it. We all think that personal branding is for uh, working professionals, CXOs, whatever. There was this really fascinating thing about Pigeon net. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. He's also a working professional, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. But yeah. I'm saying you would not expect it at, uh, you know, in that community or at that level for them to be so invested saying that, boss, this is important. It's their next business. Can you just quickly yep. take the audience through that story? Absolutely. So this is for people who say that, let my work talk for itself. These days, unfortunately, we are, we are crowded with so much content that the only person who will talk for your work will be your mother. And that too on her WhatsApp group. Nobody else, not to the world, unfortunately. So you need to talk about you talk about your work. And it's a very key topic for most people because we've been told in Bhagavad Gita saying that you need to let your work talk for itself. Exactly. Do your duty. Don't expect anything in return and all that stuff. So we've been ingrained with that completely. But just imagine, just take a look at any Zomato review for any restaurant. You would notice the review, many people saying that so-and-so waiter really helped me. So-and-so person was very, very uh, service-oriented. He was very responsive. He was very helpful. He helped us choose things. Do those people who wrote the review naturally notice that person's name organically and then wrote it in a Zomato review? Of course not. He told them, if you're happy with the service, can you please mention my name and leave a review? That's what it happens, basically. The pigeon window is exactly the same. So we had a pigeon net, pigeon problem in our balconies. No, everybody has a pigeon problem yeah. in their balconies. I mean, I don't hate them. They're quite nice creatures, yeah. but they are rats with wings. So you can't, <laughs> you can't do anything at all with them. They shit all over the place in the balcony. I, I just want True. to look at them from a Profile, distance. Yeah, yeah from a distance. Yeah. So we called a pigeon net vendor. We put the pigeon net all done completely and pigeons started sitting outside. So my da daughter actually committed that we are inside a cage. The uh, pigeons free. are free, exactly. <laughs> Quite an irony. They Quite, are supposed yeah, to be inside yeah, free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's there. After he completed her work, he shocked me by saying, sir, how did you find me? He said, I went to Google search and said, pigeon net vendor near me. I found the name. So he said, why did you choose me of the other persons you get? You had five stars and many good reviews. So can you also please leave a good review? Finished. That sealed the deal. He understands the source of his work. It's not word of mouth, it's word of Google. So he needs to control to some extent the word of Google. So he asks. He does a good job, of course. 
but he can't expect based on geeta saying i've done a good job this man will leave a review positively on google automatically nobody will do that every place very busy so he asks he ensures he incentivizes to do that quite a few amazon product vendors incentivize people to leave a good review if you leave a good review i will extend the warranty for one year so leave a review send me a screenshot i will give you over so that's also an incentive even though i think amazon um, doesn't like such incentivized reviews because they are they are they are they are kind of control kind of reviews but this pigeon and the net vendor knows that his next business going to come from people who search on google saying pigeon net vendor next to me near me so he is trying to control the source of where people talk about him it's just basic common sense which even working professionals have not realized at all and they think i have got an income i have got a work everything is normal everything is fine let me just leave the status quo as is it's when you are most comfortably settled in your work you need to start looking for your personal brand it's like investment it's like insurance when do you look for insurance you can't look for insurance when things are really bad when you have money you need to insure for a time when things are going to be bad same thing like personal brand you can't start doing it when you don't have a job you need to do it when you have the best job in the world and think everything is going swimmingly well that's when you need to invest in personal brand like an insurance amazing uh i have a weird bit of a uh, conundrum for you how googleable are you uh, i think reasonably well there's a problem yep there are a lot of kartik shrinivas many 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 <laughs> yeah in fact i get a so somebody named kartik shrinivas from photographer. chennai is a very <laughs> famous photographer he reached out to me saying quite a few people are mailing me and uh, asking me and connect with me on google or linkedin or twitter saying that can you do a workshop for us and i i have no idea why they came to us and then finally i figured out by a google that they are meant for you but nobody comes to me for for photography work at all completely this is not a single there is one person who came saying can you do a photography workshop in ooty somebody said then i passed it to him he was very happy saying that happened so the names are a problem it's a big problem but i think linkedin really really helps because linkedin comes right on top of no, but what do i search, search for you unless i put beast of trial huh. uh if i just know you as kartik shrinivasan you can do kartik shrinivasan it i still have a problem linkedin Am I, is my search uh, solid yeah. then no no i mean mostly linkedin you will get one or two in the top results you will get it actually because linkedin's page profile which you have is ranked very high on google algorithms name search index when you name search somebody on google it comes right on top of linkedin and since i am very very regular on linkedin i post literally every single day it comes right on top the other kartik shrinivasan doesn't post as much or the actor from the us who is also kartik shrinivasan he doesn't post as much thankfully on linkedin so far so it comes right on top so most people who are looking for something very specific they will be able to find out but if they are not able to find out it's fine because that's what i'm that's why i'm doing the finger pointing exercise through personal branding somebody else would point the finger to him yeah i know karthik and yeah. i have the number or i know somebody who knows karthik i can connect you to him kind of stuff but it's okay it's a big world there are common names that affect most people like you yeah, don't need does, to have yeah. A, yeah, yeah you don't need yeah. to have a really unique <laughs> name to be found that's very that's asking for like too elon much like elon musk uh, sun's yeah. day exactly right? I, i still don't know how to pronounce, pronounce it at all yes completely <laughs> so that's way too much you can't expect things like yeah, that you just need true. to manage with what you have that's true that's true and uh, one of the wittiest things that i found is uh, the best place to bury a dead body is on page 2 of google yes when somebody is searching for uh, how often have you gone to page 2 when you're searching for something or i do very very you, often you 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 would not be i mean we would not be the best sample size correct, correct, I, I, correct. I would most of the people won't yeah, they lose their patience yeah, by yeah, then actually yeah. if you're on the first page good enough and mostly linkedin result comes through actually so Okay, let's move on because uh, <laughs> this is fascinating, and I think we can talk till the cows come home. Uh, I'm also interested in your personal story. Uh, take us through your formative years. Uh, what is what are all the elements that you'd like to touch upon that has gone into making you who you are today? Actually, not much. It's just a normal middle class family. Dad was in a bank. The one thing that I'm thankful for and for dad is that he had a transferable bank job. so every 5 years we move to a new city which is phenomenal exposure because i have studied in places like bhubaneswar bhopal trichy salem 
quite a few places and that really really grounds you in terms of an experience with people the kind of people the different states language all that stuff so my hindi is above average for an average tamilian because i've studied in the formative years in bhopal where the best form of hindi is spoken in india the cleanest the purest i mean you can't call it purest but the most beautiful form of hindi is spoken so it's a fantastic exposure that helped me quite a bit but apart from that non descript quite literally uh, one interesting thing is that i stumbled onto a corporate communication job right from day one uh, that was my internship and i joined because most people don't even know that corpcom as a job exists even pr agencies they don't know at all they stumble on it much later in life it happened to me that it's there but i also took corpcom job by choice because i had a couple of other choices to do but i took it by choice because i had a stammering problem all through my life all through school and college i used to be the last person to speak out in a class if the teacher asked me to read a passage i would probably melt into the ground it was that bad i used to stammer extensively and i used to think it's something physical something to do with my tongue or throat or mouth or my head or whatever it is but much later in life i realized that it's not that at all it's just basic confidence that's about it you just need to seem confident and you will be confident you just need to project confidence somehow and if you know the topic really well you won't stammer at all if i don't know the topic i would probably tend to go uh, mm, and then stammer a lot for specific words and etc so the corpcom job was quite interesting for somebody who's stammering to pick up the extreme opposite job of talking for a living i thought it's a nice challenge to go through let's see what happens in the first year i took it and it worked very well wow this is such a contrarian choice <laughs> know, to make it that but it really helped now i don't stammer at all of completely. course it yes, of correct. course it does oh wow um, i didn't know this about you <laughs> thanks for sharing that do you think you marched to the tune of a different drum beat it could be from the career choices your parents made the friends that you hung around with uh, it could be your own family uh, and where were the seeds planted for that hmm i would say i would just put it to luck actually because the thing that i feel is more important the way career turned out eventually was that i was in the right time at the right place in the right country to some extent when social media was just picking up so 2006 was when facebook and twitter launched facebook was already there but it was only for the colleges in the us yes. in 2006 they went global public and twitter launched in 2006 linkedin was much earlier it was launched in 2002 so in 2006 i had just completed about 6 or 7 8 odd years of work in corpcom and pr and then i realized that the way we communicate from a brand perspective or an individual perspective will completely change if you give a megaphone in everybody's hand in the world that's what social media does you have a megaphone whether you build an audience or not it's up to you what you say and how loudly you shout but you have a megaphone and you can make use of it you can abuse it you can ignore it that's your choice but you have a megaphone and i thought corpcom is going to change public relations going to change individual people are going to change how they communicate with the world i was probably at the right time at the right space and i would just give it to providence or luck good luck but you also engineer some luck after you identify that you are in the right place at the right time what do you want to do with that opportunity and i made some choices i quit the agency that i was in which was conventional pr and moved on to digital pr i was trying something out for the first time this was way back when social media was very new and we were trying to build twitter pages and facebook pages for brands for the first time in india it was very exciting and we had done a quite a bit of work for brands like general motors harley davidson even linkedin all that stuff we did a lot of stuff so those experiences really really helped and but largely i would say it's good luck to be at the right place at the right time to grab that opportunity gotcha gotcha um as leaders have we become poor consumers of good dietary brain food absolutely absolutely most people don't read newspapers and i'm appalled by that fact that they don't read a newspaper at all and i mean i'm i mean i tend to talk a lot about newspapers in spite of the fact that there is so much bias so many newspapers so many view points but they have always existed yeah. it's not as if they are new at all but a newspaper is supposed i mean the the main point of a newspaper whether it's e version i mean e paper version or the print version is supposed to be that whatever happened in the last 24 hours you are kept clued in to what happened in the world in the last 24 hours 
that's literally the point of a newspaper and you would say that i'm not interested in 95% of the newspaper i'm interested only in the sports section i will read only the sports but then you are actually funneling towards only one topic of your interest you're not looking beyond that at all so you lack the dots that others have that can connect sports with something else sports with politics sports with marketing or something you completely lack that so the newspaper because it gives every topic in very small doses it gives you a broad canvas of what's happening in the world at a dot connecting level if you consume it then you can pick a more specialized few lines and then go deeper into it so newspaper reading is fantastic i read about 22 newspapers but i don't read i skim through 22 plus newspapers including global and indian it gives me tremendous perspective every single day i wake up every day very excited saying what's going to what's, what's going to happen in the newspaper mm. today i'm going to read all this stuff <clears throat> what's going to happen even the but you also realize you're an anomaly that way complete anomaly <laughs> i'm a very rare creature that way nobody <laughs> likes <laughs> newspaper these days exactly but i skim them that's the best part and it helps me connect the dots saying i remember seeing something on this some update on this 20 days ago let me go back and look at that kind of stuff but that really broadens my horizons maybe 90% of the stuff i will forget and it's useless but you never know when that will come in this is actually the broad based interest that can help you make sense of that there are dots that you can connect and you need to know that the dots exist for that you need to have the broad based knowledge so the content conception is extremely important we are very 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 going towards a society where nobody wants to consume content everybody wants to just get content in their head directly fed into it which is why you get this misinformation and disinformation because somebody put something in your head and it becomes a whatsapp forward you think it's which gospel truth which is why truth. we have uh, problems in, in conversing with uncles and aunties like Correct. this is not it's news impossible. it's for it's fake news they are offended <laughs> when i say it's fake news they How can they, you? they reply to me saying but it feels nice but it's fake what are you talking about feeling nice good luck good luck winning that argument yeah exactly <laughs> um on the trade conversation i get called into uh, you know i'm an introvert you know i don't like to share much of myself in offline online to dur ki baat hai and uh, you know coming back to your own personal struggle in terms of figuring out that it was a confidence issue that was leading to stammering um how does somebody really navigate and find that voice so what's an introvert i mean if you look at it if there is a crowded room of say 20 people an introvert would stick to herself or hums himself and then sit in a corner quietly probably these days there is a phone to look up to earlier there was no phone at all so you need to just look around with people but there's a phone and they can stick around and they be comfortable with that actually there's no issues at all an extrovert would be the opposite they would probably go and speak to every single person whether they know them or not make an introduction oh you are this i am this i am this and make connections quickly it is not proper connections fleeting connections here and there and make small talk that way now if you map the same thing online this is offline scenario if you map the same thing on say linkedin or twitter an introvert probably has a much better chance of having his or her say on twitter because largely it's going into the void on twitter you put something on twitter how many people read it regardless of your followers if you have say 700 followers 1000 followers 10 10000 followers it doesn't matter how many people read it probably about 10 15 20 30 people read it of them how many people even reply back comment back like it or ask you a question very 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 few there is a theory that 70% of the internet is just lurkers they are just lurking without leaving any digital trace the digital trace only cookies which we can't see as people and even they can't see they are just lurking around only about 20% of the people leave comments and replies and only about 10% of the people are actually content creators 70% the largest segment of the internet is just lurking around so even if you say something on twitter regardless of how controversial it is how interesting it is it doesn't matter the number of people seeing it is very very less but it's not even about number of people seeing introverts are not idiots they have a point of view they would rather share it with people that they trust and know so you need to know which topics you want to share with strangers on social media and which topics you want to share with people that you trust offline or online wherever it is so it could be a direct message somebody it's a private view and you're sharing it with that person because you trust that person it could be family it could be peers colleagues etc but there are other topics that can be open to public sharing and that you need to choose which is why i keep going back to personal brand definitions if you have defined the five windows to open 
you know exactly what to share online and what to share with people you people you trust that's where the introvert extrovert thing goes completely out of the window regardless of whether you are an introvert in the real world extrovert in the real world you can still maintain an online presence where people could associate you with certain topics and these are topics that make you most comfortable to talk to strangers online eventually you could also become comfortable talking to strangers offline also on the same topic sure. because that's your personality that's who you are as an individual literally think of it like this you are given a megaphone you go to the middle of the street here which is a very busy street and you start shouting about the topic to everybody how many people will even bother to respond to you that's twitter literally and the equal and opposite linkedin is you go to this we work place outside and you say something on a megaphone how many people will listen to you and talk about you at the professional level that's linkedin for you as long as you choose what you want to have a point of view on and decide your audience appropriately strangers known people that that you demarcate clearly there is no problem with either introverts or audiverts of course you can ask me saying what if i say something on twitter which riles a lot of people these days saying i like idli also riles yeah, riles any, a lot of people yeah <laughs> any food related thing you like or don't like it will rile at least half a dozen people and then it will go viral it will be it will come on times of india the next day somebody doesn't like idli in bangalore how dare this person exist in this planet and all that like it will come so what happens if something i say riles a lot of people that's where again i go back to personal brand and i actually inculcate a level of self awareness in leaders to not impulsively go online and say something and think through what you are saying think through the repercussions now they they don't even know how to think about repercussions for that all you need to do is just listen for one month don't share don't shoot your mouth off just listen 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 passively listen understand your ecosystem understand your scenario then you decide if you still want to say i hate idli you need to be ready for what kind of emotions or reactions it will come it can be towards something you would say i hate idli but i like idli in this format you can connect it that way but you can do that anand mahindra is a kind of leader who just, has yeah. really I nailed this art because he has got the self awareness if i say something it's likely to cause this kind of reaction so let me add this line for instance he said something at one point said uh, um uh, he was talking about um, most people have uh, some aims in life but they don't come to pulling the trigger he didn't stop at that because if he stops yeah, that yeah. that everybody will say anand mahindra does he, he promote does, gun yeah. violence or gun gun laws and etc so he said i'm not talking about gun wala trigger i'm talking about the trigger in our mind to take an action then nobody responds to it because he knows when he stops that without context people will pounce on him unnecessarily it's a waste of time and it's unnecessary it's pointless waste of time so he adds context always think of additional context that you want to add so that you get your point very very sharply across most leaders are actually quite adept at that already because they talk to employees and clients and sales leaders day in and day out they do that already it's just that when it comes to crowds that they are uncomfortable with it strangers online they have no idea who will come at them they are uncomfortable yeah. and saying why bother doing this and get into a problem but you don't need to get into problem at all as long as you think through what you are saying don't be impulsive you won't get into a problem even if you get into problem what's the big deal 10 people hate what you have said okay fine it's a big world there are enough people who like what you say enough people are also indifferent to what you say how does it even matter it doesn't matter at all grow a thick skin in social media it's perfectly fine It's okay. Or block those people who hate you. Perfectly fine. Got it. Uh, no, interestingly, you spoke about Anand uh, because you mentioned him specifically in your book as well. Yep. Yep. Now, uh, very rarely have I seen a leader of his stature not put a foot in his mouth. Yeah. Correct. He may have. Yeah, he but, has occasionally. Uh, but but when okay. you consider yeah. the number the of people, scheme. the larger yeah. people, correct. very correct. very beautifully it's choreographed, really, too, really yes. well thought out, yep. and it really gives me a peek into him, not just as a leader but as a human being. Yep. When he speaks about uh, you know putting on lungis as his favorite thing because he started in Uti and stuff like that, it humanizes him to me. Hmm. The flip side of being available is also a big challenge. With I think I don't know how he's managing it. XUV stuck on this highway. Correct. Everybody tags him, uh, writes to him because he is available. It's almost like everybody has his phone number, and they write to him. The difference there is that a phone number is a private one-to-one -one conversation. 
when somebody tags him on twitter it's public public so one i believe he has some tech mahindra team working on it basically they look at replies and they reroute it to the right customer service person or team that happens eventually anyway but i have one grouse with anand mahindra's twitter profile i mean he is a very soft content person is a very non confrontational soft content tell me a confrontational person. leader then i'll tell you so i uh, I won't call him confrontational but I really really look up to him because I've been looking up to him since the 80s that's Siddharth Basu if you follow Siddharth Basu the original quiz master mm. yeah, of yeah, India yeah, he's yeah, done yeah, quiz yeah, time yeah, and everything yeah, yeah. since the 80s yeah, he's been yeah, there yeah. you follow him on twitter mm. you will realize how candid truth to power sounds like he speaks about the most uncomfortable topics in politics current affairs etc with remarkable ease and very very well worded he is a quiz master after all wow. very very well worded he thinks through what he is writing and he is very very brave in bringing up topics which most leaders would completely stay away from but he talks about them karthik i need to push back i mean it's it's very easy for us to say that you know take on a stance and whatever right but um people in ivory towers uh can't it's afford it's it, it's a Absolutely. luxury that they can't i mean it has to be so well choreographed so well thought out and uh, like some consultant said if you are asking a question then don't do it correct exactly <laughs> don't, don't. it's a risk it's if, if there's a, a question with your there's correct. a reputational risk and uh, correct. you know correct so there is there is an off limits charter for every single leader even for me there's an off limit judge for instance if something uncomfortable comes about one of my clients it's just common sense that i don't speak about that on public platforms i tell them directly in their face or i call them or i whatsapp them that's better instead of talking about on twitter because they would come and say come on we are working you could have told me this why are you sharing this on linkedin yes. fair enough exactly so you need to respect that kind of thing similarly for leaders like anand there are constraints they can't afford to talk about many topics at all they can talk about it directly when they meet that person or that leader or somebody in the company they can do that so there are off limits topic and those are based plainly on common sense but having said that those who raise their voice and speak truth to power gain a lot more respect and credibility because they have they are swimming against the tide swimming with the tide is very easy you don't even need to swim you just need to stand and the water will take you completely against the tide takes effort for instance i criticize advertisements a lot a lot of advertisements i criticize but as much as possible i make it read like the framing is like this could have been done better instead of saying you suck this brand sucks this is terrible i hate it but there are also, some ads that i also hate of course of course but yeah. it's almost like somebody going to the creative guy and saying maza nahi aa raha hai Correct. क्यों मजा नहीं आ रहा एग्जैक्ट यू मेक इट यूजफुल टू अदर पर्सन आई मीन देर आर समटाइम्स वेर आई डोंट यूज एड अ यूजफुल कंटेक्स्ट एट ऑल बिकॉज आई एम सो बग्ड विद दैट थिंग सेट व्हाट नॉनसेंस हैव यू डन मैन काइंड ऑफ स्टफ डे व्हाट हैव यू डन लाइफ्स बट मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम आई ट्राई टू एड अ कंटेक्स्ट ऑफ दिस इज प्रिसाइसली व्हाई दिस डजंट वर्क फॉर मी एंड आई डोंट स्पीक फॉर द वर्ल्ड आई डोंट से द होल वर्ल्ड विल हेट दिस एड दैट आई कैन से आई कैन से आई डोंट लाइक दिस एड एट ऑल the more criticism i give the more people want to read my criticism because it seems reasonably fair as criticism not just that like uh, like the idea of journalism right if somebody says it's raining it's your job to open the window and actually and look, see it exactly, instead of just trusting instead of just trusting exactly and uh, about talking about speaking truth to power uh, i'm meeting up with anand goenka as well uh, huh, okay. my alma mater from express and uh, a textbook case of speaking truth to power when raj kamal ja uh spoke and there were union ministers sitting right in front i mean that a lot of integrity and a lot of courage and a lot of resilience to take the flack along with it yeah. and uh, so unfortunately coming back to the anand mahindra example right when i tweet and i at anand mahindra i expect my treatment to be preferential than somebody going to the local very dealer very unlikely very very well, unlikely. of course it's unlikely but Correct. what is my he has got 10 million hard... followers so what do you expect <laughs> <laughs> my understanding is ho jayega correct right he he wouldn't even have read your tweet that's the problem because he gets millions of tweets every single day tagged at him it's like his email and phone id is phone number is everywhere in the world anybody can tag him that's the equivalent of it unfortunately but i've seen 
I mean, most people want to stay very safe on social media, say the right things, say politically right things, never criticize anybody and then think that anything I say has to be constructive. Recently, I was having a reasonably... Uh, healthy conversation. Not healthy, <laughs> fairly antagonistic okay. debate with a senior creative director who didn't like that I did not like one ad. Not he did, somebody else did, but I did not like that at all for whatever reason. And he came back to the personal ad hominem comment saying, make one ad and then show it to me. Then you talk. Otherwise, don't talk at all. You don't make ads. I make ads for a living. This is like a, this is like a movie director telling a film critic, make one movie and then talk. You write only critical things. Can you make a movie kind of... That's a stupid argument, actually. Anybody can comment anything. Your choice to ignore it. But their argument is your point of view is shaping others' mindset of how to view my content that I have done. But isn't that the whole <laughs> exactly. point? That's the of whole uh, point. <laughs> Correct. They have to form their own opinion. Yeah. They will probably form an opinion after see the ad, but my opinion also stays there. Why if should your are, opinion be invalidated? <laughs> exactly. They should not be invalidated at all. So I, I literally tell many leaders saying, if you have something critical, frame it appropriately. Frame it in a way that it doesn't sound harsh that's or rude or That's a master class mean. in itself. It is. It is. I mean, I actually experienced this firsthand. Uh, during the Maggie crisis, the Maggie led the crisis, everything went to shit and Nestle had to remove most Maggie's from the market. It was a very bad state for a product at number one uh, level in India. And I, I ripped them apart left, right and center. Their digital engagement was very poor at the time. They were engaging very, very stupidly and all that stuff. And their print ads were bad. The content of the ads were bad. Everything was bad. I wrote about it relentlessly again and again. And Many years later, say about five or six years later, eventually I met the senior team in a in an event. I thought they're going to eviscerate me, but they actually came and said, thank you so much for being the voice of reason without sugar coating it. Your criticism actually helped us do things better while we were at it. Because our agency was not helping us with critical point of view because they are our agency. They are paid to do the stuff. But you said, don't do this, do this. That really helped us course correct things. And we are very thankful for it. And I said, I'm probably on the right track with criticism. Don't make it personal and mean. Make it useful for people to read. At least make it enjoyable and useful for people to read. <laughs> no, that's such a beautiful story of a brand stepping up and owning the space, right? Yep. And yep. saying, hey, listen, you know, thanks Correct. for that. This was helpful. Look at it this way. Why would you do all this if you're not invested? Correct. You don't and have I anything personal. That's what they said. We are not even paying you. Yeah. And you're actually helping us yeah. while criticizing us. Yeah. That was quite useful for us. I think that's the best way a brand can look at it, that if somebody can be so invested in finding out what I'm doing wrong, yes. it's actually good investment. Hire them eventually. <laughs> <laughs> true, very true. Um, I work with a lot of uh, Indian CXOs who are uh, set for the global stage. Now, I have a take on what they can do better. Do you have a sense? As of now, I think this is not just India's year. I'm a great believer in the India story, in spite of a lot of things that are holding us back. I think there's immense potential, immense potential promise. And as it is slowly, we can see a lot of CXOs are getting populated with Indian faces and stuff like that. And I, I'll be meeting up with some of them. Um, for a pipeline for future leaders, when you put on influence as a hat to, or a lens to think about, any idea what we can do better or what we are not doing that other parts of the world are doing? Mm, I wouldn't even give so much importance to influence as a trait actually because influence is what happens eventually. Influence is in the minds of people. You can't call yourself an influencer and say I'm an influencer because that's not working at all. You, I mean, you can be persuasive in your content and arguments but whether that influences or not comes from so many other factors depending on what the audience believes you to be. So influence is probably secondary. At best, where I would focus on is articulation, which is one step before communication. Articulation happens in your brain. You see something in front of you, you read a piece of news, you observe something happening. You want to tell it to somebody, whether it's an individual or a group of strangers or on social media, on LinkedIn, wherever it is. Now you need to form sentences in your head and then that goes to the people eventually and then you edit it, re-edit it, write it, whatever it is and then it goes finally. But the articulation happens in your head and that's where 
I would put all the attention on the first draft you make in your head and then as you start typing or writing that first draft that literally is based on how much you read about the topic what's your world view what's your exposure everything comes into the picture if i talk about an ad and refer 10 other ads it doesn't mean i am an advertising expert it just means i can use google better than you that's about it but i am able to still connect the dots because i know there are more dots that exist out there i seek them again and again and again i might have seen those 10 ads for the first time in my life right now researching but the people who are reading it don't think like that they would think oh karthik knows hundreds of ads by his head which is completely false and i'm not going to break that opinion in their head or either anybody can do that it's like if i ask you a very complex mathematical formula and you use a calculator to do it and i don't know that you used a calculator i would think you are a genius unless you ask me categorically saying how did you do it i'm not going to respond saying i used a calculator this is it doesn't matter at all so articulation is where i would put all the attention on if you articulate it well your thoughts well you can eventually think of being influential and you you think that is something that indian leaders definitely need a leg up totally totally right? yes one they need to pick topics to articulate on sure. and not have an opinion on everything and anything we sure. are indians we have 10 different opinions on the same thing i have different That's personas in my mind already exactly correct uh, what is uh, harsh goenka the yeah. other is anand correct but by and large indian cxos are notoriously reticent yeah culturally Correct. it could be ingrained in us you know so many things yeah. right talk less work more talk less work yeah. more but on the global stage and i see american ceos use i mean not just ceos the whole country in in their ability very, to very art, vocal very yeah. vocal and they very articulate extremely very articulate exactly. i mean when i work with my american coaches it's such a pleasure because a they prep yep. they come pre warm pre cooked yep. they come they are ready with questions observations anecdotes illustrations metaphors it's such a beautiful conversation yep. to have with them i think one of the things they can definitely do do is uh, you know punching above their belt weight yep. and communicating and yep. figuring out and articulating as a practice Correct. not just aop annual general meeting i'll no. talk to shareholders no. or i'll no. talk to this no. thing kind of a thing are there any good cxos that you think are great at articulating it could be online offline you know um not necessarily on social media mm-hmm. but i look up to somebody like rajiv bajaj he is one of the few people who swims against the tide actually and very boldly he has got a big business to run lot of money at stake but he speaks truth to power and very very candidly in a very sane manner nothing extravagant but that's definitely a chip of the old block <laughs> totally yes his father was equally that and if you read the annual reports of bajaj phenomenal the first page where he writes a letter to the shareholders superb very well articulated now he is not an anomaly but he has chosen that path consciously because that's what who he is in his head he cannot be anybody else that's who he is but the others probably have a mask they put and the mask is based as i said earlier it's based out of common sense it's just normal common sense but even within that i would say you can still look beyond that common sense mask and put things in a graceful diplomatic manner things that you are absolutely not okay with you can but again you need to look at your audience who are you putting it to are you going to talk to that person face to face next week don't tweet it talk to that person face to face today and then leave it at that but if you have no connection with the topic and it still irks you that something like this happening talk about it and that's where articulation comes to the fore because you need to find ways to convey what you have in your mind you can't just blurt out saying this is nonsense why is this happening that you can do it you with, with 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 your wife or your spouse in confidence you can't do it on the road middle of the road you need to choose your words carefully and do it it's very easy to say hunky dory thing saying things are good and india is good that good and etc which you should continue doing it because it is a fact but it's more useful to swim against the tide with the right words and the right sentiment and articulating your thoughts well it's what makes you stand american ceos are known for this they will speak something from their mind but they will put it across very very beautifully and very well articulate they frame it very very well and that is probably 
up to that country actually because that yeah, country yeah, inculcates yeah. oh, talking up absolutely. as a trait 100%. here we don't inculcate talking up down. at all yeah we talk <laughs> down and we keep quiet more often than talking yeah, unfortunately yeah. and that's an inherent trait actually no that's uh, beautiful i think uh, what i get is disagree all you want yeah. dissent is uh, uh, is important for progress and evolution in the process of disagreeing with somebody don't become a disagreeable person correct so don't make it personal mm. make it about the point of the argument which is ad hominem basically so and don't carry meanness or rudeness when you're disagreeing with somebody just put it out and then move on this is a stranger why do you have to be angry at that stranger at all completely it's a point of view fine you don't like idli fine it's okay i like idli big deal <laughs> how often do you have confrontational conversations offline where you have a point of view you drive us take in the ground and say this is it that's it actually offline zilch wow absolutely nothing it's all happens on linkedin <laughs> quite often linkedin comments is where most of my confrontation happen on an everyday basis somebody doesn't like my point of view they come at me very hard and they say you like this ad are you out of your mind yeah fine big deal i like this. and i don't respond to that at all mostly unless they explain why they didn't like something that i wrote if they say your argument was terrible bad argument and bad points that you made fine okay that you hold that view i don't care at all but if they say here is why you are wrong in holding this argument that's what's useful actually to me then i reassess why i held that opinion why i held that argument and see whether i can come to a middle point or argue with that person and see where it goes basically that is quite fascinating that rarely happens offline unfortunately because i think physical connection and uh, seeing each other we behave very differently because there is so much more communication happening which is non verbal which is body language eye contact hand movements everything brings to the fore a very different personality in terms of arguments online linkedin you are talking to a dp how does it matter what i say is what everybody starts with and they just shoot their mouth recently i wrote an ad about why parents should be careful when they are sharing photographs of their kids it's an ad from deutsche telekom and i wrote it one person took it very personally and i was wondering where this guy is coming from he said you do you i will do mine but this is just fud you can't just tell every parent not to share photographs of their children and i was wondering where is this coming from why is this such a strong opinion i looked up his profile he shares videos of his daughter every day on linkedin that's where it's coming from and he took it very personally as if i am sharing this ad and my point of view to attack him i didn't even know he existed till he commented in the post but he took it very personally then i later understood okay i totally understand why he got that i should have seen it earlier but i saw it much later unfortunately karthik i think uh, you know in a very weird way thanks to the pandemic there's a lot more awareness about mental and physical fitness and i think present company i mean included i started taking it much more seriously than before it was like a wake up call for pretty much everybody um what is your two bits on the importance the adherence and the discipline to keep it going uh this is all the more relevant for people who think they are on their own they are independent consultants or freelancers because at least with a regular routine 9 to 5 work you wake up you have an aim to take some kind of travel to go to work and then have lunch outside and then come back travel back home at least that physical activity keeps you reasonably um, agile but with freelance work it's killing because it's just you your laptop from one room to another room that's not physical at all and that we saw in a very accentuated manner during the pandemic for even school children there was no activity at all they'll just move from one room to another room one screen to another screen that's what literally happened i highly recommend having a daily routine like your personal brand routine you need to have a physical routine also it can be anything you don't need to hit the gym lift weights that's eventually for a more pointed purpose but at least walking and running would definitely definitely help i run 5 kilometers every single day it's my daily fixture and you've spoken about it which also adds Not this uh, <laughs> layer of uh, accountability correct you exactly. kept somebody else as an accountability partner and in this case in this case it happens to be to be the world <laughs> literally the world exactly and i love doing that and i run whenever i get time mostly in the evenings i run and that one hour is very very good i watch tv shows when i run on my treadmill if i run outside i listen to audio books and i keep running with that but i've seen practical impact of that running because some of the best ideas come 
while I'm watching something else and I'm running and it just happens to be a client related idea. It just appears. I think, I mean, I don't know, may, maybe doctors can explain this better. Something happens in your brain when you're running. It does happen. And there are something that glows in your brain. At the end of the run, I'm feeling happier than ever for the whole day. That's, uh, that's no the wonder it's thing. called the runner's high. Right? It's, it's a runner's high. The and that's rush the that best get. high mm. to get addicted to. Every other high has got a problem, health problem. Runner's high is the best high. And that sweaty feeling that you get after you run for one hour and you're just there for five minutes soaking in the sweat and the runner's high, it's phenomenal. You have to earn it every day. Without earning it, I can't probably sleep at all. No, I can't uh, eat a friend of mine calls it, I got to earn my beer. Yes, so <laughs> literally, yeah. Of course, when you drink a beer, everything goes for a toss. But drink beer only once uh, a quarter time yeah, but that's month, that's yeah. that's really great and um, you know uh, in leadership uh, you know in in my coaching workshops and in my one on ones uh, i work on something called executive presence and physicality is a very very important aspect of it mm-hmm. and Someone, that's the vitality that you as a leader that i really look up to from that point of view was a very active leader mm-hmm. and also a very hardcore fitness freak is aditya ghosh ex indigo now oh, yeah. you have to follow him on instagram mm-hmm more than LinkedIn and Twitter, mm. to track his fitness routine. Wow. Phenomenally consistent. Phenomenally, matlab, I can't even tell you how consistent. And he's even on the holidays, he's in the gym every single day. And he likes horse riding, all physical activities. He's a total inspiration. Phenomenal inspiration. Amazing. Yep. And, uh, you know, for me, the penny dropped. Uh, it's, a, it's a very weird thing, right? If your grandmama said it hundred times, if your mama said it thousand times, and you still never listened or it was not there. So once I was listening to, of all people, Joe, Joe Rogan on his podcast, and he said, uh, somebody asked him, how do you work out every day and stuff like that. And exactly like you said, you know, he replied, you don't ask me if I brushed every day or if <laughs> exactly. I had a bath every day. It has to be as seamless. Uh, you know, this, something just blew in my mind. Correct. I'm like, wow, it is the same, isn't it? Yep. Or it ought to be thought it's of as the same. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a daily habit. It's, 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 it's crazy. So I started putting together my own toolkit for my own behavioral change. So I had my workout the previous day. I would prime myself. I would keep everything ready and stuff like that. And I would uh, tell a little few of my friends saying that. In fact, I contracted with one of my friends in Singapore. And I told her, look remarkably fit she's like remarkably fit i said i'm going to send images of my workout every day you don't have to reply it's me sending it out of the universe in this case it happens to be to you and true to her she just couldn't keep up she's like damn good way to go one month two months and now it's been about two and a half three years and i love the part when i go to the gym when i'm doing weights or when i'm with my trainer it's it's beautiful it's a it, it's given me a lot uh, back and I have another friend of mine who, who started running and, uh, you know, there is, is hit a rough patch. And he's saying, Jay, only now I realize my, f- my running is helping me mentally. Correct. It copes. It, you, it helps you cope. Yes. And such a beautiful, Correct. you know, correlation. It does. Right? Because your physical health affects your mental health, literally. Yeah. And most people don't even realize it. Yeah. They think outside factors affect my mental health, which also does, of course. Hmm. But you can control at least a part of it by being physically agile and active. I think that I have this, you know, circle of concern, circle of influence, is, right? Circle is, of concern, yeah. you, you know, if you give your mental real estate to everything, correct. there is a play. I mean, Absolutely. everything will come and sit It'll and come and you sit down, exactly. right? Correct, correct, and correct. Uh, if you focus on what you can influence, and one of it is your own physicality and your mental health. Amazing. Um, this is something that I was asked by somebody and uh, it really made me relook at my relationship with my kids. Um, what have you learned from your kids or people younger than you? Recently, um, so, something that. So my entire Instagram existence is because of the kids. Not my kids, but other kids that I look at generally. I joined Instagram very late, maybe 2020 20 only or 2019, 2020. Wow. Very, very late, kicking and screaming because I'm not a visual first person. I'm a words first, text first person, which is quite outdated these days. Everybody's TikTok and Instagram is visual first, video first, basically. So I thought if I am posting something on LinkedIn, I would need to contort myself to an image first on Instagram. Otherwise, I can't post text alone. You have to post something in the visual and then only. And most people don't read. It's assumed that most people don't read long paragraphs of text on Instagram because the first thing they see is a visual or a video. And then if necessary, incidentally, they also happen to read. Unlike, say, Twitter, Facebook or LinkedIn, where first thing you see is text and then incidentally you see a video or a image kind of stuff. 
So I joined Instagram much later looking at the younger kids and etc. And I said, I will just work it the way I want. I will put an image for the heck of it because it forces me to put an image. And I will still write, write up to 2200 characters that it gives me. Because I have so much to add in terms of context and point of view. And I kept at it, doing it. I didn't succumb to the kids variety of posting. These would get you more followers. and I just kept at it. One of the clients that I finished working... And the CEO, she called me aside after the workshop went very well for a week for the leaders. And she said, do you know how I reached out to you? I said, uh, your HR would have told you or you must have seen me on LinkedIn, etc. No, she said, no, my 16-year-old daughter follows you on Instagram. She doesn't follow on Twitter because she's not on Twitter. She's not on LinkedIn. She follows me on Instagram. And she happened to follow me because I post photos of my terrace garden. Occasionally about photographs of this flower, yeah, that yeah, yeah, tree yeah, yeah, and etc. She happened to follow because her interest is in gardening and she followed me. Incidentally, she noticed I also talk about personal branding because that hashtag shows up my posts in a timeline. And she happened to tell her mother during dinner one day saying, I follow this guy in Bangalore who posts about terrace garden flowers etc. He occasionally talks about personal branding. That led to that CEO telling her HR head saying, follow this guy, track this guy, let's do something. You can't even predict things like this. That's inbound marketing, but how can you predict a 16 year old daughter saying to her mother at all? That's Instagram for you. That's the power of Instagram. If oh. you're thinking, I don't belong to Instagram yeah, 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 yeah. because my content is professional, <laughs> think again. You can be professionally dry content creator, but you yeah. can still put it on Instagram and build a following for that. Amazing. The closest analogy that I can think about is when Rupert Murdoch's da- daughter spoke to him about the voice. And uh, which is when he went and got the rights for it and wow. you know, stuff That's like that. That's how it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he listened to his daughter. Like nobody knew about this. No, no, no. There is this format. You know, you should check it out. And, you know, he went on. Um, books or movies that have influenced a pro- profound shift in you? Uh, movies, quite a bit. There's nothing one I can point out. Books, there is one. The mm-hmm. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, the number Adams. is 42. Yes. <laughs> Correct. So <laughs> Douglas Adams is my all-time favorite Amazing. writer. Amazing. The book is not particularly life-changing or life-eliminating. It's a good, fun, sci-fi humor book. But the kind of ideas he packs in that book and the words he uses to articulate his ideas is something that I'm forever inspired by. Apart from a Tamil writer named Sujata. His name is Sujata Rangarajan. That's his writer. He is the equivalent of Douglas Adams in Tamil. I have not had the pleasure. Yeah, Yeah, the same wit, same humor and same science interest and science fiction interest. Mm -hmm. He's written a lot of science fiction books with very original ideas and etc. Those two are highly, highly influential. And I seriously miss them on Twitter these days because both are dead, unfortunately. If they were both on Twitter, they would be crackling good. But sadly, they're up there (laughs) probably talking to each other. Amazing. Any final words for leaders to get onto the first step of personal branding before we wind up? Read, read, read and read more. They just don't read at all. Even for leaders who say, but I listen to podcasts. Yes, please listen to podcasts, but also read. The written word you reading, you imagine things in your head and you form opinions on your head. You form words and sentences in your head. That reading is very important. That's the 90% work that I said. The 10% is articulation, which eventually you need to learn. But reading is absolutely important. I'll give you a small example, which is very embarrassing to me, but it happened in my life. I was in Ogilvy. And one of the departments in an ad agency is called planning department. The planning is supposed to know the client inside out, the client industry, the client inside out. You're supposed to know more than the client. That's the role of a planner. They are the brains of an ad agency or even a PR agency as a planner these days. And I was speaking with the planning team and there was a planning intern. She was fairly new, very, very young, probably fresh out of college. And I was making some point and I said, that this is very Enid Blyton-ish. She asked me, who is Enid Blyton? And I was shell-shocked. How can a 20-plus-year-old person in the current times not know Enid Blyton's existence at all? And I tried to rationalize it, saying Enid Blyton was 200 years ago, kind of stuff. How can she know? But it's not about knowing all the books Enid Blyton wrote. It's about knowing that Enid Blyton as a concept and a person exists and has written these kind of books which have been influential to a certain age group of people. 
it may not be relevant to her at all she may never read a naughty or a famous fi or a secret seven at all it's perfectly fine but you need to know that something like that exists and for a planner to not know something as influential as Enid Blyton who was influential at one period of time absolutely. for a lot of lot absolutely. of people absolutely yeah to it, not it, know it, that it added a lot to her childhood correct so yeah. she is missing that dot that she cannot connect which i know the dot i can connect it to something else at all so that's the simple value of reading so even if you don't run every day it's fine but at least please read spend time consuming relevant content it should be your daily habit like brushing and having a bath otherwise you will stink in both ways <laughs> i think karthik um, you know for me it will be somebody who doesn't know the beatles or 20 year old who doesn't know the beatles correct, right correct. Uh, for them to have that kind of i think uh, john lennon once said uh, we are more famous than christ and they actually were correct correct right? exactly um, so you don't need to know all the songs by heart not at all you need to know they exist and what they were popular for and who they are meant for you as need sim- to know the basics right yeah, as simple general as that. knowledge actually general knowledge is probably dead these days are nobody we an, wants to know the elitist uh, few it's are we not the elitist uh, no, we are just our, our view right huh. now not at all uh, are you sure about that because yeah. you know publishing is going out of the business yeah i'm not talking about reading in print publishing at all because these no, days consumption the, of yeah, knowledge the reason why people don't read is they think google mein hai na mai google but you need to know what to google when to google why to google for that you need to have the basic knowledge without that how will you do that you can't do that and as of now <coughs> the sad story of uh, leadership in all walks of life i'm not going to single out corporate uh, leaders yep woefully bereft of knowledge in terms of in, in yeah. terms of consumption yep yep of yep. Uh, they would probably have phenomenal detailing of their own industry but beyond that industry very 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 poor even if they are reading they are reading very fleetingly they are not reading with a purpose they are just reading whatever the newspaper or what which is fine which is perfectly fine but go deeper into some of the topics that are ancillary to your industry for instance look at the mint column uh, written by vivek kol he writes a column every week on mint he brings across completely disparate something and adds some numbers to it and makes sense of it yeah it's not that's, numbers for the sake of numbers exactly or, you know, that's yeah, connecting yeah, the dots yeah, creativity yeah. that's creativity he is creative he is as creative as an ad agency but with words and thoughts and articulation that's articulation creativity but i think you hit the nail on the head in terms of consumption first yes you need to consume right i mean Absolutely. if you have to come up with a pattern if you have to come up with a with a hypothesis that stands on the shoulders of giants for lack of a better word you need to first read the giants correct again i'll go back to the analogy personal health if you don't eat right what will you shape <laughs> you can't shape anything at all you need to eat only then you can shape something otherwise what do you have to shape nothing else you'll no, be skinny very very interesting and because uh, you know i tell my leaders it has to be like a dietary the thing right you can't just go carbing all the time your brain needs vitamins proteins you know it you exactly, need to vary that exactly build that and read read yeah, read read and yeah. it has to be a daily practice you can't give excuse like saying i'm traveling i'm busy and etc that's like saying i don't want to breathe hmm. you have to read amazing karthik thank you so much for your time uh, i had a great time uh, in this conversation it's over time just flew by thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much for having me on the show today Thank <laughs> you.